To say 2020 has been momentous is an understatement. From the initial shock of COVID through a summer of protest and riot into a presidential election like no other, it's safe to say our nation has been shaken by 2020. And yet, life for us in Del Norte goes on, largely, if you exclude the pandemic restrictions, unchanged. There have been no riots here. The election unfolded just as it has for decades. Even the coronavirus, at least at the time of this recording and knock on wood, though surging, has mostly spared Del Norte its worst so far. That's not to say we've been immune to the larger drama. There were the dueling protests at the fairgrounds this past spring and summer over the COVID lockdown and Black Lives Matter, which involved the same 100, 150 or so politically active Del Norters on both sides, but did have some tense moments. A gun was drawn at one protest. And we got worked up over a billboard in the harbor in Crescent City because it didn't have any white people on it. All in all, if this is the Del Norte version of 2020, things could be a lot worse. In that way, we in Del Norte sit in a place of privilege. Because of our remoteness and demographics, we can lose touch with the larger travails of our world. We could become complacent. Which is why I was delighted to get a message online a month or so back asking if I would like to have an uncomfortable conversation with a black man. Hi everyone, I'm Paul Kritz from KFUG Community Radio, and this is an uncomfortable conversation with a black man. The black man is Elijah Brunson, a 37-year-old father of two and a very active community member. I worked with Elijah a couple summers ago in the Youth Training Academy. I know him to be a thoughtful, compassionate person, so I was naturally interested in what he might have to say. Earlier this summer, we had Elijah on the KFUG newscast, News Now, after he'd posted online about some graffiti he'd come across on Highway 199. The message, spray-painted on a guardrail, read simply, White Lives Matter More. Elijah was understandably appalled, and the graffiti, along with the thumbnail firestorm that erupted online because of it, left Elijah with some questions. It's those questions that were the starting point for our uncomfortable conversation. Elijah Brunson, how are you doing today? Good, I'm doing great this evening. Um, I gotta ask, why are we here? What's the purpose of an uncomfortable conversation with the black man? It's just um, bringing up the topic and just there's various subjects that people would probably want to discuss, mm-hmm. but don't feel comfortable discussing either in person. So, you know, just giving them a platform where it's like, hey, you can ask this conversation. You can have this creative dialogue and just figure out, well, why? Well, wh- why does this bother you? Why does this particular subject bother you? What sorts of things do you see people here locally getting getting bothered about that doesn't make sense to you? <laughs> The the big one for me is the political landscape of how people are either a Republican or Democrat. Um, they're either for um, incumbent President Trump or um, Joe Biden, and they just get frustrated about certain things, how uh, one party says we support Black Lives Matter, other per- party says they're not, says they're um, a terrorist organization, and it's just kind of... F- interesting that like certain people a person an individual will say one statement and that is what the people will run with and it's like well okay how about you do your own research about it and figure out why this particular subject or statement upsets you so much mm-hmm. um another big thing is just politically like locally just people um there was a billboard south of town um in the harbor it bothered a certain segment of people so much so where they were calling the funders who put the billboard up. Hey, this billboard's got to get put down. Um, there was a black lives matter, um, rally fairgrounds. Um, an individual even pulled a gun on them. And like, for me, it's in the, um, the few years I've been here, it's, it's kind of interesting that no one really says anything, but then they seem so bothered by that particular group to, to have a rally, but then you can have a rally about um reopen the county reopen all this other stuff and it's not a big deal which is understandable you know people the um, the country's hurting economy's hurting really bad but it's just like certain things they associate a certain 
ideation with what's happening in these larger metropolitan areas where the the segment of people are really, really hurting. And so when you have a certain group of individuals who are destructing, causing chaos, I feel like people are associating that with everything with that is involved with that movement. And that's not even the case. I'm not for like, I'm not for Black Lives Matter. I'm not against. I just think like people should really, really have um, an informed decision when you're saying I don't like that movement, because it's like for me, it's I um, even here in Delaware County, if I was to get pulled over and someone else was to get pulled over, I feel a little bit of anxiety associated with that because they're not used to seeing individuals like myself around town here. So they get frustrated. Um, another incident that actually, I'm actually glad this actually came up um, just Friday evening at Walmart here in town, there was um, loss prevention was watching me move from, I went from the paint section to the costumes to check out. It was in self checkout. The loss prevention individual didn't ask me. He had the cashier ask me, well, can I see your receipt? And I was like, yeah, I scanned everything personally. Well, why did you decide this to me? And then how they rationalized it was you were in the vicinity of somebody we were actually watching. And I was like, the segment of the way the country is going now, that's not, that doesn't really fit with me because it, you made me uncomfortable People were watching why you asked to look at my receipt. So for you to say, oh, you were in the vicinity of the person we were actually watching, it's kind of it's kind of brushing it under the rug, which is it's very like half hearted and just, OK, whatever, you know, just get over it. And it's just like, OK, well, you know, it it doesn't. How am I supposed to feel comfortable walking there at certain times of day now? And it, it's just, yeah. So you, did you feel profiled then? Oh, a hundred percent. I called the um, the manager the following day. I even tried to speak to the um, the CSR that evening, and it was kind of like she kind of was trying to defuse the situation, but she kind of wasn't really understanding why I was so agitated with it. And it was just like, I don't think you understand. Like, okay, the the way the country is going now. I don't even bring race into that, but it's like to go to be so brazen to say, hey, let me see your receipt and show me these specific items. I've never had that happen in my life. Oh, they had you like itemize the receipt? Itemize, physically itemize. I had um, a costume for one of my sons. I had some duct tape. I had a a sauna suit because I'm actually starting to go work out again. And it was just kind of like, well, wow. Okay, well, you want to see everything on there. What if I had some personal items if I was a woman? that I don't want to show you as a, an individual, but yeah, it was just kind of like, okay, wow, I have to, I didn't realize that was, um, the case, but okay, I'll show you whatever. And I was, and I, I meant, I pointed out to the, um, the head, ca- the cashier who was by the self checkout. It was like, if I didn't purchase everything, there's no way it would have came to $60. Like <laughs> there's, I bought four items that came to $60. There's no way it doesn't come to that. Um, it jumps to that price. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If I didn't purchase at least that costume and um, the sauna suit was about 15 or $16 as well. So it's like, boom, that's the majority of the cost right there. Those two items. So it's just, it was just interesting because it's like, for me, it's, I go to Fred Meyer numerous times, never happened. Yeah. Um, Walmart, where I actually live, that actually happens. And you're kind of like, well, okay, well, I'll just make the trip up to Brookings where at least I know I'm not going to be, you know, profiled or just followed just because they're, they're so heightened security and they change the hours and do whatever for loss prevention techniques. That's, it's just, it, I, I just think it's um, interesting that they went about it that way. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. How old are your sons? Um, seven and eight. Seven and eight. Dang. <laughs> what do you tell them about that experience? Um, I actually talk to them about the stuff that's been going on. It's like, you know, not everyone appreciates your dad just because your dad is a black man. And it's unfortunate because why can't I just be a man? Why do I have to be? Oh, there's Elijah, the good coach. He's the black man or whatever. And it's, it, you know, it's unfortunate. Certain people see it as such and. You know, I don't know if it's just the the stereotype of the absentee father as being a black man, but like for me with my sons, I'm like heavily involved with mm-hmm. with their lives, um, their schooling, and everything that um, goes on with them. So just letting them know, not everyone's comfortable with that because not just here in Del Norte, even traveling throughout the state, 
um, what I did, what I do with my sons to try to create memories. You see it in certain um, parts of the state as well. You know, they're kind of not as comfortable with seeing a, a black man with his kids or, you know, I don't know what it is, but it's like, why can't a father, why do I have to be a black man with his kids? Why can't I just be a father, you know, traveling about with his sons? And I just think a lot of times people just associate with black man or, you know, this, this and that. You have to be a certain level of, um, like just politically correct or whatever. Like it's just interesting because it's like, well, why can't I just be a good dad? The community is a great, great community and has a lot of potential. I feel like certain realms of the community keep it from being the Crescent City it should be. How so? Um, just the the ruckus about the um, the billboard. Um, a few months back, I was traveling to Crescent City from. Um, over in Grants Pass, Medford area, and noticed uh, somebody put a graffiti on that says White Lives Matter More. It's like, that's my, by a tourist hub and on a K-Rail, that's Caltrans, and I'm sure someone saw it, but no one really said anything, and it's by um, up by Gasky, and it's like, okay, you know, a lot of people hear about Gasky for for kayaking and various things, hiking trails. So it's just like, okay, well, you know, I live here. And then even remembering going back to that day, it's like seeing that somebody saw me taking a photograph of it. And it was a family, kind of a mixed family. Um, they were like, Hey, am I going to be safe here? And I'm like, yeah, you'll be fine here. You know, I'm saying that just kind of reassuring myself along with them. Mm -hmm. But it's like, when you see that and you see me taking photographs of it, they get kind of worried. Cause they're like, why is this, why is this black man taking photographs of an incident that happened on, um, the side of the road? And then I put it on the, um, social media and here's a, a big thing. And certain people, um, were just kind of like, oh, you know, apologetic, sympathetic, and thing. certain individuals are like, well, you know, I don't want to be told how to feel about certain things, and it, it was, it, it became this big old um, attacking storm, um, a lot of people became like social media gangsters, and like saying <laughs> verbiage that they wouldn't say to an individual face to face and that's where like it came about the idea of like okay let's have this conversation because if it's bothering people so much they can say all this stuff on social media why not let's have coffee or whatever you know it's the middle of the pandemic obviously but like why not be willing to have this conversation and come together because there's people within the town that are like hurting is that the political landscape in our community or is that just the isolated incident mm -hmm. And then you kind of wonder and then you see people, um, you know, flying flags and it's great to be um, patriotic. And I, I love our country. I, I just only thing only thing I have to say about the people flying the flags is I love that seeing the patriotism and things like that. But it's like if you're going to fly a flag on the back of your vehicle, make sure it's a worthy flag. You uh, coming in tonight, driving uh, to the KFUG studios, you have to drive past the famous, uh, we call it the Confederate compound, because uh -huh. they fly in the, the, the Confederate flag down there just right. about a mile up the road. What's that mean to you? That is, you know, I, I think that seeing that, because I've gone to the recycling center, the dump several times, they have a Confederate flag. There's one, I believe, in the harbor where my sons go surf all the time, too. Um, but this one has a Confederate flag and a don't tread on me sign. And then they have an Oakland Raiders. So I'm like, okay, one, two. And then you have an Oakland Raiders, which is completely random of those other two. Because it's like, if you look at their roster from top to bottom, what Al Davis stood for and some of the players are in their ring of honor, you're kind of like, this guy's a, a Raiders fan. Like, <laughs> um, you probably shouldn't be a Raiders fan with, with, um, that confederate flag or whatever and so yeah so the people the people who defaced the the billboard mm -hmm. and uh, and who also uh, uh and i'm not assuming they're the same people but they certainly share outlooks but uh, who did the uh, the graffiti that you saw at gasky um what would you say to them what would you ask them what was what did you gain by writing that sentiment and defacing a billboard mm -hmm. like what did the billboard do to you that made you so upset because 
I know a lot of people are upset by what they see on the media up going on in Portland, at, back in Minneapolis, um, in New York, D.C., Los Angeles, um, all these major cities or some not as major um, where they're writing Black Lives Matter across the streets, um, on billboards, various things. Well, why, like, what is, what does that do to you? You're defacing a major intersection entering our city. So, and basically whatever, even if people who don't agree with it, they're like, look at this defaced billboard entering this town. You know, people have negative sentiments about Crescent City as it is, and then you're coming around defacing a billboard. Regardless of what the billboard said, you're just defacing a billboard entering a town off a major highway. It's like... So is it the defacement? that is that more upsetting to you than, than what was defaced, specifically the Black I, Lives Matter mask? Um, a little bit of both. Because okay. I, I, just, I just don't get, like, why people get so... Um, agitated and get so um riled up by when you say black lives matter it's like you know african americans are enslaved for over 400 years um there's not a thing for me talking about like I, um white privilege or all this other stuff that people discuss and get angry about it's like i think everyone you know you're, you're entitled to work hard and entitled to your opinion but i feel like certain things people discuss it gets them riled up, but what's, what's why? Like, well, why is that um, frustrating for you? Because is that not also a question you could ask every racist in the United States? Mm hmm. Yes. It's just because it's like, well, why does this affect your life? Mm -hmm. Why does um, certain people running for office affect your life? Why does. Um, people backing a certain sentiment like affect your life if it doesn't well then you kind of have to just live your life to the best you can live it because I think a lot of times people don't um, see what they're saying and they just kind of type it it's easy it's so easy on social media to type it out and hit send and then it's kind of like, you know, a lot of times there's been great people who I really respect. Who um, One of the individuals who wrote, who made a statement, um, I had to screenshot it and like I kind of finally deleted it. was like, I don't I hate being told how to think about a certain um, statement. And I was just like, wow, you're not a bad person. But like when you make such a brazen statement, I was like, that really like affects me because it's more of like you're a person who I really respected and you make that statement because I say like the statement why lives matter more really it really affected me whereas it's like you know evaluate relationships how you see certain things and how you um you move within the town because you don't know if everyone's going to be comfortable with you mm -hmm. and then it's kind of like even if I go up to the river up in Gaskin I'm like am I going to be okay or is this person here or not it could have been it, you know and that graffiti and the billboard defacing could have been and, you know, with the, the way people were just fed up with the pandemic, could have been some tourists just passing through. I want to cause a, I want to cause a stir. But, you know, I, I think a lot of times, you know, it was kind of like things like that. I felt like it was really, really brushed under the rug because there's there isn't a huge sec segment of Crescent City who's African-American. But there's also like a Hmong community here, a Latino community out in Smith River. And it's more of like, OK, well, if it's not myself what is it against them and what is it against these other um segments of the population it's like how the um their um city of klamath or town of klamath was shut down but then you know someone uh i don't want to get political a person individual goes down there and says hey we're going to go to this restaurant and support this business which is understandable you want to support that business but you're not respecting that sovereignty of klamath mm -hmm. you're just saying i'm going to be defiant and go to this restaurant even though there's a lot, that population of people can be highly affected by COVID-19. Can you see living in an ex in a community where maybe, like I can see totally what you're saying about there are other things that are more important to this community. Can you see and, and appreciate the other communities in this country uh, where maybe they have to focus on things like, like you know, inordinately being being killed by police you mm -hmm. know and, and and the fear of being pulled over and all the things that have happened to all these people that have been in the news all summer long and even before going back centuries mm -hmm. i mean is that a luxury 
that kind of desire to 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 move beyond that because we live here in Del Norte County? Yes, I, I feel like it is, but it's also like it. Even though those isolated in- incidents didn't really um, directly affect me, but it's also like when my son sees a man being knelt on dying, and they ask me about it, and then that. I have to explain, well, you know, something happened. It wasn't good. Um, Wow. Um, So many incidents of hurt have happened. There, Where's the lack of empathy of people? Just understanding and listening to those stories and just humanity. Have we lost all sense of empathy towards our common man? Or is it just like, I, I'm so mute on it because it's... You know, now it's the time of, you know, African-Americans or blacks just complaining just because. And, you know, no one expects people to they want stuff given to them rather than, you know, strapping up their boots and get out there working for it. And it's just like I, I've heard that a couple of times from different people, seen different statements. And it's just more of like, wow, you really feel like that? Uh, or are you just saying that on social media? Mm-hmm. Because. You won't vocally say it, but you'll type it. Yeah. Do you feel that that with with BLM, uh, with everything that's happened this summer, uh, I mean, it seems like so much of it, uh, it's the problems with society. It's not just racism. It's not just, you know, anti anti science. It's not just all the political stuff. It's almost like there's a systemic issue with us not being able to feel that other person. Mm hmm that maybe underlies all of those things yes i just think a lot of times people don't feel the other like you mentioned the other person so they're kind of like just removed from it and just like i'm gonna say what i say and deal with it if you don't like it so be it and it's unfortunate because people are making statements and it's just kind of like you're just hitting sin just because i don't think you realize what you really just said and just rationalize it and have some empathy for where these people are coming from because unless you've been in their shoes or um, been discriminated against, you have no clue what these people are out there rallying for and crying for. And for you to minimize it, it it's 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 kind of it's kind of sad. It's like I almost you know want to pray for you and hope that you would understand where they're actually coming from because. People aren't just out in the streets in droves just because they're angry, lazy complainers. Mm -hmm. They're in the streets because they've actually witnessed real discrimination, real political um, mistreatment, and they don't see change. So they feel like that's the only way they can actually get change is by getting in the streets, marching, doing all these other things. And so, you know, it, it it's, it's just interesting because um, you, you have people who have the slightest clue about that, those feelings or empathy towards that. And then they kind of just were like, ah, well, I'm against that. hundred percent. They're adamant against that particular thing. And it's like, unless you've been this, like for me, my biggest question for a person, if you've never been discriminated against because of the color of your skin, like, how are you going to tell me I'm just complaining or bringing up something just because I'm a complainer? Oh, he's just, a, you know, so a person can say, oh, Elijah, he's just a complainer. He's just whatever. Get over it. Or here's a big thing. Just get over it. Just get over it. It's like, OK, so let me have you go inside um, you and me as an individual. Let's go inside Macy's over in Medford. I'm dressed nice. You're dressed nice. And a person, um, a salesperson approaches you, I'm there, same thing, button up slacks on my lunch break, approach you, you know, 15 minutes gone by helping you. There's another associate there kind of meandering around the cash register, but they never do. They never approach me. I know it's a random hearsay, but it actually does happen. Mm -hmm. So for a person to minimize and say stuff like that does not happen. It's kind of like that's because you've never... You've been oblivious to it the whole the entire time. I've like I believe like certain even certain um, businesses would probably even do that. Like you can kind of talk to someone on the phone. Like this example, um, I was contemplating 
um, if I got into grad school down at HSU, call the place for a rental, talk to them on the phone. Um, great. And then when I go down there, like, you know, hesitant to shake my hand because they put the physical presence with the voice on the phone, articulate all this other stuff. And they're like, oh, hey, um, OK, we'll get back to you. And I'm like, no, you're not. Oh, wow. I'd, I'd rather you say no, thank you. Then say we'll get back to you. We, mm-hmm. You get back to you is basically your way of trying to sugarcoating. No, we're not going to rent. We'll never yeah. rent that to you. Yeah. And it's unfortunate that happens a lot down in Humboldt County with uh, students and some professionals down there. And so you know, it, it kind of is what it is. And I, I think, um, yeah, the big thing for me, the big thing I would like to people just to understand is like you know, unless you've been really discriminated against. Uh, based on the color of your skin like you can't really tell a person how to feel about it because mm-hmm. that it, that is one of the most hurtful things oh uh, just get over it it's like well okay you know okay you're not going to walmart me not going to walmart doesn't make a difference with walmart walmart's a billion dollar trillion dollar business but you know for me it's more of like i live here in this community so it's like well now i gotta go another 35 40 minutes north mm-hmm. or go to safeway which doesn't have everything i want what if i want to buy a um you know, uh, something f- like for a household item. So, you, you know, it's just, it just makes it, t- it makes it tough. Yeah. Okay. That wasn't too uncomfortable a conversation, I don't think. No. No. <laughs> it's, it's easy. And that was our uncomfortable conversation, which wasn't. To be honest, I expected a more radical black man someone more vehement about BLM and racial injustice. What I discovered in Elijah was an exasperated black man in search of answers, more concerned with being just a man than a black man per se. I found it interesting that he thought the instances of racism he's experienced in Del Norte were just isolated events, even as they've continued to happen. All of which reminds me of my perspective. Elijah isn't the gatekeeper for racism or black America. It's important as a white person that I remember this. There were no I have a dream moments in our conversation, no Red Hills of Georgia. Elijah doesn't represent the greater American black experience, and at the same time, he completely embodies that experience. Elijah is the existential quantifier of black America in that his desires are so simple as to be applicable to all black people facing racial injustice in America. In fact, Elijah aspires to the same experience every American does at heart. He's just a guy trying to live his life. Thanks to Elijah Brunson for coming up with this idea. There will probably be more uncomfortable conversations, but the holidays are coming up and COVID is surging, so we'll see. Listen for us in the new year. Till then, I'm Paul Kritz, and this has been a production of KFUG Community Radio.